Hello everybody. Welcome back to How to Build a B-1 Bomber. I have been busy. I have all my holes cut. I have uh, all these bulkheads glued in. Except for my side pieces. But uh, the rest of them are all glued in. See how that all firmed that all up? Man, it's, it's like a... It's solid now. No more floppy. Solid. Everything solid. I'm gonna show you how I did all this. I actually used uh, fiberglass tape on uh, this bulkhead and that one back there. I really don't want nothing twisting back here. I want all this solid like a dang tree stump. You know, because uh, the way them elevators, you know, the elevons. Uh, the way they move, you know, I could see them really torquing on this fuselage back here. And uh, I really want all this solid, solid, solid. So uh, I fiberglass taped these bulkheads in and glued them from both sides. And uh, that ought to take care of any kind of tweaking. And also I'm kind of, I don't want this thing moving, you know. Like, you know, I cut out a lot of this, even though these decks are carbon fiber, I just cut out all the bottom of the fuselage, and I was kind of worried about the strength there. That's why I got this big old hunk of wood here, and I really wanted to tie this all together good. So when I tripled my plywood here, three layers a quarter inch, just on that lip right there, and then I dowel pinned it right in the middle, because remember, that's, that's notched out right there, and that slides all the way back. I drilled a hole, CA this stick up, and it tapped it in there. Same thing here. And uh, man, the shear strength on that is just tremendous. If you got your hole drilled just right, to where it's nice and tight going in, not loose, and uh, you got a good glue joint on your wood, uh, them things ain't coming apart. And, you know, to help hold that main spar in place, you know, uh, we bounce it in something like that I can see it wanting to tweak on all this so I just made all this just as solid as I could and I put another dowel pin here because that went all the way through into this piece of wood and I'm going to show you how I did that I got it partially kind of started just take I got a piece of tape Marking the depth I want to go because I don't want to go all the way through. And then we grab the CA. This is one of the this is one of them anti-clogging tips someone came in, out with, and uh, <laughs> didn't do so well. I think I ought to write a letter, huh? Then we're gonna just take some CA and glue that up, get them in that hole. Then just take your hammer. Well, you can hear that bottom out. Wipe a little of that extra CA off of there. There's my cutting here. Just that easy. And man, you want to talk about a glue joint now. That dude is solid. And it, you know, it'll it's even actually hold it on this fiberglass. And to get a really good bond on my fiberglass to these wooden rails I put in, I uh, drilled holes and put screws. And I left this one in there. And I screwed all that down while that epoxy was setting up all, all through here. There's another one I didn't take out yet. But all, all through here. And uh, then I'll just hit them with some filler. But man, that really gets you a good bond. And uh, let me show you guys something else I did. To help get all these rails nice and straight. So I didn't have you no know, waves going down through there. Got an old six foot straight edge. Laid it on there like. 
like that, glued up my sticks, and clamped it off, and just went down it like that. And uh, man, that's all nice and flat, no waves. And uh, went this way to make sure it's all nice and flat. And it, it's just all perfect, it's coming up perfect. And uh, you know what you're thinking? Well, if I block that off, how am I going to get my wires and all that stuff through there? Well, uh, I'm going to make my hole for my fuel tank right here. There's going to be some good sized fuel tanks too, man. See that whole cavity in there? Butch is going to cut me some foam off the you know, mold he's got, the program he's got, so he can actually get this perfect shape in, uh, in a big hunk of foam. It'll be a right and a left, and uh, so they'll fit in that entire cavity, just perfect. And, uh, man, I'll be able to hold a bunch of fuel. Have one here, one there. Those don't remember my carbon tank. But uh, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to have that kind of as a header tank. These two tanks will fill, feed that. That tank should stay full throughout the whole flight. And then that will branch off into my turbines, which will have their, each of them will have their own little air trap tank. And uh, that's going to work out awesome. But uh, I'm going to take my hole saw, just a saw you put in a drill. I'm going to come in here and drill holes. I'm going to have to go up there by the edge. So it won't interfere with my fuel tank. Then I'm going to take these cardboard tubes, and guess what? It's Christmas time, and these things are thick everywhere. Then I'm going to glue. I'm just going to glue these tubes in there. So once this compartment sealed off with my uh, plywood, I'm going to use light plywood, by the way. I'm going to call Lone Star. Uh, Lone Star uh, Balsa and uh, ordered me some plywood today. See, I put these rails going down and uh, on the bulkheads and uh, glued them in there nice and tight. And on the top, man, that's just going to sturdy this thing up. It's going to be like a big old tree, people. It's going to be nice. I can't wait. And uh, that ain't all. That is not all. I got some more stuff to show you guys. I've been working on, hey, someone out there gave me a name for my bomb dropping device. The BBDD. Okay, that's Bob's bomb dropping device. Okay, I've been busy. I took, I took the, that prototype thing apart, and uh, actually this one. And I cleaned it up the way I wanted it. I put some pins through there and I pinned it to some wood. First I drilled my holes in all these wood pieces. I just took squares. And I used this thing I got from Harbor Freight, you know. This thing makes awesome big holes. I mean, it don't splinter the wood. And, uh, man, it just makes really nice holes. I love that thing. But uh, after I got all my holes cut, and that actually happens to be the same size hole for my pipe. You gotta really squeeze it, but it goes on there. Okay, so I have my square piece with my hole in the center. Then I took this, lined them up with that tube, lined two pieces up with that tube, tap that in there, and then tap them pins in, and then, then took the tube out, took them to my little router table. I know you guys heard me talk about that thing on but I don't think I ever showed it to you. That's just one of them little cheap tables with a router on it. If you got some parts to cut, that is the way to go. You just make your template, and then I save all my templates over there. And uh, man, anytime I need a part, I just go pull that, tack it to some wood, and vroom, cut it out. But I made four of them. Okay. And I got my holes cut for my tube. 
See, it's going to go right through there into this one and uh, come out there. And uh, I'm going to make a just a square piece of wood back here and then fasten it to that bulkhead. So, you know, it'll be like wooden bearings. Two of these go back here and two of them go up here. And they're all going to rotate at the same time. And, you know, just one, two, and uh, drop two bolts at once. Now, I came up with uh, another idea. This is the killer one. See them little notches right there? Okay. This is how I'm going to drop my bombs. I'm going to take, I've been saving these by the way people, i got a whole bunch of them, just paper towel tubes. Okay, they fit right in there. Just perfect. I got these little magnets at uh, Harbor Freight. It's like two bucks for like a dozen of them. And uh, they're, they're rare earth magnets and these things are powerful little dudes. But I'm going to JB weld a magnet right in there. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get one of them off with one hand. They're powerful little dudes. See, they're just just a little magnet. Can't even hardly see it. There it is. But they fit just perfect in these notches. Bam! I'm gonna JB weld them in there. Okay. Now I've got magnets all the way around there. I'm gonna just glue some washers there and there. Just take some little washers. And then they'll stick right under. Okay. Now what's going to make them fall off? I know that's what y'all's thinking. I'm going to get me a little wheel from the hobby shop. I'm just using my uh, medication bottle kind of as a deal. That's my high blood pressure. I got to take every day, so I leave it right there in the shop. But I'm going to just take a little wheel and uh, I'm going to mount them. And as this goes around, as this goes around that wheel, we'll push that bomb up enough to uh, drop it off. See how that? See how that's going to work? As that turns, that wheel won't need to stick out very far, but about like that. And now come and lift that, push that bomb right off. Choo, 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 choo. I think it'll work. What about y'all? Y'all think that'll work? I think it will. That made me a new sprocket. This one's a lot better than that first one I had. It was kind of splintered up. About the only problem I had, it was just a quarter inch. And sometimes that servo arm would want to not want to go on there right. So I make that uh, uh, glue two pieces together, then cut it out. And uh, this will work a lot better. And uh, that's about the only problem I had with working that thing but I think them wheels are going to work awesome as it turns it'll hit that wheel and push that bomb right off of there I'm going to mount my servo in here and uh, I think it'll work but I'm going to hook it all up since I got all my parts it'll be, be real easy before I flip it over so I can see because my other idea was to make something like this but I'd have to have a top and a 